and believe in the same hadith, then why are there four madhabs and why do they differ? I do agree that as far as the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat is concerned, major chunk of the Muslims, all of us believe in the same Quran, we believe in the same hadith, we believe after the Quran is the Bukhari the most important, then say Muslim is there, then you follow the Qutb al-Sitta, that Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, then Ibn Majah, Sunan Nisai, these four are the main collection of the Qutb al-Sitta. And there's unanimous agreement between this, the Quran, and the Qutb al-Sitta. Number one, after the Quran is Bukhari, then Muslim, and then the other four books of Hadith. Regarding a question, that why are there four madhabs and why do they differ? As far as the four popular madhab that we have today, and we follow the four emmas, that is Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on them all. I love all these four emmas, I respect them all, and I really pray for all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them mercy, and may Allah put all of them in Jannah the Fridur Salana. Let me correct you first that these four madahib, they came to explain to the Muslim Ummah Islam in detail. Let me tell you that they don't differ always. They differ rarely. More than 90 to 95 percent, all the four madhaib are the same. They may differ in some issues, maybe minor issues. As far as the major issues are concerned about Salah, we have to pray five times, regarding Zakat, regarding Hajj, all these four madhaib, they are same. In the minute aspects of Salah or if Hajj, they may differ here and there, but they are minute differences. It's not a major difference at all. It is not worth fighting over it. So let me tell you, that 90 to 95% of all the four madhaib are the same exactly. They may differ in small issues and very few. All these four ayamas, they said that if you find any of my fatwa, any of my verdict, which goes against Allah and His Rasul, which goes against Quran and Sahih Hadith, then you throw my fatwa on the wall. So all these four ayamas, they were great scholars and they came to explain the deen to us. Regarding why do they differ if we follow the same Quran and the same Hadith this is a very important question and this question troubled me for many years. Alhamdulillah Allah has blessed me that I have met many scholars from all these four madhahib and I interacted with many of them many hours and I spent time with them and I posed the same question why do they differ and the reply they gave was there some less satisfying, some more satisfying. But there's no convincing reply for the masses. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, after meeting these scholars from all these former Dahib, my vision of Islam and the differences, Alhamdulillah, expanded a lot. Allah clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3, verse 103. Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. We Muslims are supposed to hold to the rope of Allah that the glorious Quran and the Sai Hadith and all its ijma, all the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat, the Muslims, we believe in the Quran and the Sai Hadith, then why are the differences? To explain to a common man, I will give you some examples and always believe in explaining people by giving examples which they understand. I would like to ask a simple question to the people who know English. What is the spelling? of the word color. Can you guess? Give the reply. You can give the reply on the WhatsApp, you can give the reply on the Facebook, you can give the reply on the YouTube. What is the spelling of color? I'm not getting any reply. What is the spelling of color? What is the spelling of color? Some may say the spelling of color is C O L O U R. Some may say the spelling of color is C O L O R. Which is correct. A person who is well versed with English will tell you that the first spelling is the spelling of British English. 
C O L O U R is the British spelling for the word color. C O L O R is the American spelling for the word color. I'm asking you the question, which is correct? C O L O U R or C O L O R? And again, you'll have different opinion. Some will say C O L O U R is correct if you're the British. Some will say C O L O R if you're an American. Some will say both are correct. But even if they differ, you never find them fighting over this issue. They may differ. A Britisher will say C O L O U R is correct. I'm an Indian. We were ruled by the Britishers, and quite a large portion of the world was ruled by the Britishers. So all those who were ruled by the Britishers and we were British colonies, we will follow British English and we will say the spelling of color is C-O-L-O-U-R. The American will say C-O-L-O-R. We agree to both. A Britisher would prefer C-O-L-O-U-R, but if someone says C-O-L-O-R, fine. We agree to differ. Same with the American, he will say C-O-L-O-R, but he agrees. He believes that is better, but he agrees with C-O-L-O-U-R also. Similarly, this is just an example I've given you. How do you pronounce O-F-T-E-N? How do you pronounce O-F-T-E-N? Some will say often, some will say often. Previously it was often, then it became often. Now new people are saying no, often is correct. T is not silent, it should be pronounced. Some say T is silent and then there's a big debate for that. But we realize that both are correct in their own ways. Similarly, these schools of thought four that we have, actually, there were many tens and hundreds of Imams and scholars. These four, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on them all, may Allah grant them Janit Firdos to all. They were more popular or maybe their students made them popular. There were many other Imams, many other Sheikhs, many other scholars, but these four, their teachings became more popular. Maybe the students made it more popular. And that's how we have these four major madhahibs. But all these four great scholars and four ahimmas, they never came to bring a division in the Muslim Ummah. They explained their point of view. Because if it is very clear cut in the Quran, there is no problem at all. If it is clear cut in the Hadith, the difference comes when there is a difference of opinion. Now, why is there a difference of opinion? I will discuss that. Previously, I used to think, okay, fine, you know, maybe the difference is in the hadith. Some people say say hadith, some people say hadith. That is the difference. That is not the real answer. That may be in some cases. After meeting so many fuqahas and scholars of the different madahib, I've come with this example of the spelling or the example of pronunciation. So similarly, these madahib differ. What is the major reason? According to my study, there is usul effect that in areas where it is not very clear cut, Quran says alcohol is haram, there is no fik in it. Allah says haram, it is haram. So no one will differ allowed or not allowed. Every, so that's wrong. Where there is difference in understanding the Quran or the Hadith, etc., then the fik starts. So as far as usul effect is concerned, there are different criteria for giving your ruling on fiqh. Some may have five criteria, some may have six, some may have seven, some may have nine, some may have even ten. I will not discuss in detail, time does not permit and difficult for common men to understand. I will just give you a few examples for better understanding. Number one difference is difference in the criteria. As far as the first two criteria are concerned, it is the same. Number one criteria in all madahib. All schools of thought, it is Quran. Number one, there is no difference in it. Number two is the Mutawatir Hadith. All the schools of thought believe that number two criteria for fiqh is the Mutawatir Hadith. What is the Mutawatir Hadith? There are various different classifications of Hadith. One of the classifications is depending upon the narrators, the chain of narrators. Mutawatir hadith means a hadith in which there are various chains of narrators in every generation. That means that hadith has been narrated by various, many sahabas who heard the Prophet say that. Then the next generation tabain, there are many tabains who repeated that hadith. 
Then the Tabe Taba and many Tabe Taba and repeated the Hadith. So in every generation there are various many narrators. So in one of the classification of Hadith, it is based on narrators. It is maybe a Garib Hadith, a single chain of Hadith. Then this Ahad Hadith, one narrator is there at any one stage, only one narrator. For example, the very famous Hadith, the first Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, Umar radiallahu anh, he said, that the Prophet said, Innamal amal binniya. Your actions are based on your intention. All you find this Hadith in Bukhari, in Muslim, in various books of Hadith, but there's only one Sahaba who narrated it. So if any of the stages, where the stage of Sahaba, or the Taba, you know, Tabi Taba, any of the stages of narration, if any of the stages have only one narrator comment in all the Hadith, it becomes a had Hadith. So there are various chain of narrators, but all the narrators end to Umar radiallahu anh, and then Umar radiallahu anh narrated what the Prophet said. So it becomes the Ahad Hadith. It may be a Mashur Hadith, there may be two or three narrators, and it keeps on various categories. The highest category is Mutawatir, that means several narrators at every stage. That means every stage have many narrators. Number is not fixed, there has to be more than four or five. Every stage. Some are 20, some are 30 at every stage. So number one is the Quran. Number two is the Mutawatir Hadith. All the schools of thought agree that the number two highest category of evidence after the Quran is the Mutawatir Hadith. Third category onwards, the third criteria of evidence differs in different schools of thought. Some have five criteria, some have six, some have seven, some have ten criteria. In some schools of thought, the third criteria, highest criteria of evidence is even Ahad Hadith. As long as it's a Sai Hadith, even Ahad, no problem. It can be a Mashur Hadith, it is the third highest. And some schools of thought, no, no, no. The third after the Mutawatir Hadith is the Urf, is the custom. That if the people of Medina did this act, it is the custom, it is the third highest, higher than even a Sai Hadith, which is the Ahad Hadith. Some will say no, it is chaos analogy. So different schools of thought have different criteria in order. First two is the same, the third may be a Sahih Ahad Hadith, some may say no Urf, the custom, some may say Qiyas, analogy, other group, the fourth becomes Ahad Hadith, the fourth becomes custom in some schools of thought. So from the third onward, it differs. So based on this difference, some may prefer custom as a higher, so if it is not there in the Quran, if it is not there Mutawatir Hadith, it is an Ahad Hadith. So this school of thought is Ahad Hadith. The other says, it is in Ahad Hadith, but it is not in the Urf. So I will not believe, I will give Urf more importance, custom more importance. So the differences arise in what you give more importance to. Do you give importance more to Urf, the custom? Do you give more importance to chaos analogy? Or do you give more importance to Ahad Hadith? From third level, it keeps on differing in different schools of thought. So because of that, what you give more importance to differs. That's how the ruling differs. But all these rulings are minor. What you have to understand that we have to respect the ruling of all the four schools of thought. Because all the four schools of thought are based on Quran, they are based on Hadith, but the level of importance may differ. Some schools of thought say, they may have a criteria, if you are talking about Salah, it should be a Mutawatir Hadith. Because Salah, the Prophet prayed in public, almost all the Sahabas saw him, so if you give about Salah Ahad Hadith, though it is Sahih, I will not follow. If it is Salah, it has to be evidence for Mutawatir Hadith, otherwise I will not follow. That is their thinking. You may agree, you may not agree. You may say no, it's Ahad Hadith, one Sahaba reported it, it is sufficient for me. It's a Sahih Hadith, fulfill the criteria of Sahih, it is sufficient for me. Other school of thought say no. If it's other matter, I will believe in Ahad Hadith. But Salah, such an important thing, Prophet paid every day, five times a day. It should be a mutawatirat, difference of opinion. So how do you differ? So the third and the fourth and the fifth level of criteria after the first two differ. This is the reason why the major difference is there in the four schools of thought. It may be difficult for people to understand. Number two, the difference may also be that you may differ that whether it's a Sai Hadith or not. Some may say it's Hasan Hadith. Hassan Hadith is the lowest level of Sai Hadith. Some will say no, 
it is a daif hadith so daif hadith is not a hujja is not an evidence for saying something is fard or something is haram it may have other values so the muhaddithin may differ and when they differ they differ in mind some may say hasan some may say zaif hasan is the lowest category of sahih classifying hadith on the basis of whether it is sahih zaif or mawzu is another classification sahih hadith itself there are 10 types of sahih hadith then comes zaif then comes mawzu time will not permit to go into details so the second type of difference of opinion in fiqh besides the criteria is whether the hadith is sahih or zaif few but third may be difference in understanding the hadith for example the hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that after ruku the prophet stood and he kept his hands where they were so some schools of thought i'm not mentioning the names purposely some schools of thought say the prophet kept his hand on his chest before he went to ruku the hand was on the chest so after ruku when they get up they keep their hand on the chest the other i must say no before starting the salah where were the hand the hand were at the side so when they get up from ruku they keep the hand on the side so here you understand that the difference is because understanding the hadith all of them agree that the hadith is sahih but one fuqaha agrees that this hadith refers to where were the hands before going to ruku the other fuqaha agree that it was before starting salah so difference in interpreting the hadith so one is because of criteria which is the major difference number two is that difference in whether it's a sahih or zaif number three in understanding the hadith similarly there can be a difference in understanding the quranic verse also for example the verse of the quran says that when a woman touches your wudu breaks so one fuqaha agrees the physical touch breaks the wudu the arabic word is masa coming from the word lamasa lamasa has got two meaning in arabic one means the sexual touch one means a physical touch so one fuqaha takes it as a physical touch and the physical touch breaks the wudu the other fuqaha says no it means sexual touch so physical touch does not break the wudu so the difference is that they in understanding the meaning of the verse of the quran so because of the differences whether there be difference in criteria whether it be difference in whether sahih or zaif hadith whether it's a difference in understanding the hadith whether the difference in understanding the verse of the quran because of this the differences are there and these differences are minor we should not fight over it what we find today that because of these issues there are some people who just study for a few months or few years and they start saying that okay my fiqh is the best and is only right one which is wrong all these were great fuqahs we love them all we respect them all even they among themselves when they differed they respected they agreed with the other view what they said my view i think is afzal it is better that doesn't mean you are wrong but today most of them you are wrong i'm right what i say even i am right to say i am only right is a big problem or you can say i think this is afzal this is better that you can say but today what we have no i am only right you are wrong because of that there is tension and there is fighting we muslims should be united these are petty issues the differences are going to be there there were differences in the sabahs we should not fight over it and we should agree that we agree to disagree we should not fight over it and all these issues are not on the major issues they are minor issues so i request the muslim ummah that we should be united and we should respect these aimas and we should respect the scholars and see to it that we follow the quran and say hadith as close as possible hope that answers the question